welcome back, Round folks. Three, welcome back to Athletes Incorporated, folks. Um, catch us on IBTV.us, Roku TV, and YouTube. Comment, subscribe. I'm going to get right into it. What's the controversial topic of today's show? Uh, the NFL folks, again, have missed the mark with their national anthem protest. Uh, what they're going to do about it, what's going to be said about it, what you can do, what you can't do. And they do not seem to be able to get it right. Main reason they can't get it right is because it's a bunch of old white men in a room, these are the owners, who are going to decide what black men, primarily black men, are going to be allowed to do. So from their perspective is what they're speaking of. And what you see many bigoted people say the same thing. They're disrespecting the flag. They're disrespecting our military. And it is a, it's nothing is further from the truth. And the more you tell these people that and you show them what it's about, the more they become entrenched of Donald Trump, fire the sons of bitches. President of the United States, number 45, he comes out and says, oh, NFL's done a great thing, and if they don't like it, let them leave the country. Wow. Let them leave the country. So if you don't agree with something now, not only do, are we going to take away your right to protest, but you need to leave the country. If that's not fascism, uh, folks, if that's not border going right toward what Nazis did, I don't know what it is. So I've got three things to say. Number one, uh, I totally agree with everything you're saying. But number two, I, I think the NFL is the real evil enemies, folks. And if you guys don't know this, back in 2009, the NFL took millions upon billions of dollars of marketing dollars from the U.S. Armed Services yes. to have things done on the field as far as with the national anthem, ceremonies, things of that nature. Before that time, folks, it didn't matter. People were sitting around. The anthem wasn't a big deal. So the NFL created something that a kind of an environment where things like this could happen. Number two, when it comes to Donald Trump, Donald Trump has tried to get into the NFL several times through the Buffalo yeah. Bills, creating different teams. Um, and the NFL didn't want him involved. USFL. USFL didn't want him involved and mm -hmm. doesn't like him. This is so Donald Trump is actually doing some of this stuff to get, to get back. back at the NFL. Yes, and that's what he does, folks. We know. Yeah. He lies and connives and gets back at it. And him. number three, folks, you have to understand that we're not pro we're not protesting the military. We're protesting the flag. The fact that the flag is a very racist song. It's been cut. There's been lines cut out in the song that has to do with slavery. But even having said that, uh, Trey, the men were not in Kaepernick neck is not uh, uh, protesting the song per se. Right. What he's doing is trying to draw attention to police, police brutality. Right. Awareness of discrimination against all at a, of disproportion colors. at a disproportionate rate. Yeah, you can oh, look yeah. into at to the numbers. Crimedata.com, folks. You can look into the numbers yeah. and see. Yeah. Now, here's what some people are going to say: Playing devil's advocate, people are going to say, "Well, the NFL is a team. They have a job. You know, you have to do certain things at a job that necessarily you wouldn't have to do on your own." What do you say to those people who say this is a job and you have to adhere to the rules of the job? What do you say to them? I say that there are times when things are so abhorrent that something has to be done about it. So for me to say that, well, if they get to do that, I work at King Supers, and I should be able to come in with my personal thoughts about what's going on. Um, I don't think that we should have the uh, tickets that they give at the, they flash on you now. Right. That's, th this is not the same. We're, we're talking about people being murdered by police officers, being assaulted by police officers, and not having any consequence. Right. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. You have on that blue, and you are given a license to kill. And then they thought, well, this is how far our society's gone, and we're getting political now. They thought putting body cams on. Well, we'll be able to view what this is going on, and it'll stop. No, it doesn't. Now you can just see it. 
Last week they went up on a porch, pulled a little boy off, roughed him up, beat him up because he didn't have on a bicycle helmet. Right. So they're driving down the street, see a little black kid, he doesn't have a bicycle helmet, and arrest him. They, they, they are doing whatever they want to. But, you know, I was just reading the thing with Malcolm X. Folks, or those of you who aren't familiar with him, beautiful, beautiful man. Uh, back in the you know, civil rights era, uh, he was a black Muslim, left them. But at any rate, he said that black people have never paid the price to be free in this country. We have paid the price to keep white people free. We have fought in every war have died in every war and have come back to the United States from every war and suffered the same or worse oppression than we left. So until that time comes, until people stop saying, well, you know, I have to go uh, because I have bills and I, I can't take a knee because they might. If you would all stand together collectively, then you wouldn't have to worry about individually losing that job. But until they will stand together and stand up, until you're willing to pay the price, like Kaepernick was, which means your job, okay, that wasn't that I just want. But he can look himself in the mirror and say, I stood up for the right thing. I did the right thing. Years from now, those people who weren't supportive will not be able to say that. And even more important, Trey, because let's give the blame, there's lots of blame, let's give the big blame for me is still the NFLPA. Well, they were even, yeah. 75% of your people in that union are black Americans. The man who runs it is black American. He's good friends with Roger Goodell. Though. I wouldn't care who he's good friends with. They should not stand a chance. And if you're the president of a union, that's an adversarial relationship. Should we be cordial with each other? Yes. Work with each other? Yes. But I want something different than you want. And I'm supposed to lead those men, and they're supposed to go down a road that's going to help all of us. And this is a way to help the whole United States, to help our whole society. Right. And folks, just so you know, if you don't know what the new rule is, the new rule is if you're on the field, you have to stand, or, you're, or the team, the, the ownership the team. will be fine, the team will be fine, or you can stay inside the locker room. Do you see anybody kneeling next year? I think the people who would kneel will probably be in the locker room. Because the fact of the matter is, I think Kaepernick said it best, and I heard him uh, talk, or uh, it was written, that what the awareness that he wanted to bring and what could have been done has been done. Right. So kneeling anymore, this does not tell the right-wing, racist, uh, uh, KKK part of our country it's not telling them anything new, and it's not telling the left wing, democratic, liberal, anything new. They all know what's going on. Now, what can be done? And I don't know that anything can be done. Think of all the marches we've had. Right. The Women's Day March, all the people all over the country, and still nothing has been done. Because the power brokers, that 1%, that control and everything, 98%. they're not going to give up any of their power, and they're not going to change anything. Until they have to. There are no more Malcolm X's, Angela Davis's in this world. Yep. No more. So, you know, you have people like the mayor of Denver, Colorado, uh, the president of the city council, Albus Brooks, that's Mayor Hancock, Albus Brooks, who take the money. They don't stand up and say anything controversial, not anything mm -hmm. controversial, mm -hmm. because scared of their job, their position, whatever, and still. People you met coming up, you're gonna be coming down. And there, you know, but but like we're saying, the, the, the Malcolm X is the people that will die for their cause. Those people, we we, we unfortunately we don't have that right now. It's too many distractions. I, I keep well, saying, yeah, and I and know, you know it's getting old, but it's too many distractions. You know, there's lots of you know they allow you to talk, to put stuff on Facebook, to march, to sing, to pray, to forgive everybody for what they've done to you. But change? Nope. No change. Well, I, I think that, um, I don't know what to think, but I think <laughs> that there's going to need to be some changes, and I hopefully with this next collective, collective bargaining agreement, some changes are made because it's coming up next summer with NFL PA.
So we'll see what happens, folks. So give them a little more money. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um, well, folks, we're going to be off next week, but um, it's been a great show. We'll see you guys the following week, and we'll talk a little bit more about football. My name's Trey. This is my dad, Harold Johnson. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. Have a good memorial day.